Retro Rob's Daily Videos. Hey Rob here, and it's time for one month with the Artie Boy. Now, in this particular video, uh, I'm only going to cover a game or two. I'm not really going to talk much about games themselves. I'm going to talk more about the device and my experience with it over the last month. Um, I'm going to show you how to load games onto this very specifically in this episode, step by step. I'm going to be doing it on a Mac, but exactly the same process on Windows, except for uh, the install is a little bit different. Uh, basically, if you're a Windows user, which I am too, I've got a Windows box over there. Uh, instead of uh, just dragging it into a folder, you uh, do a normal install, which is you know basically you double click on it and walk through the installation instructions. So that is uh, that's the only difference there. But uh, what I do want to talk about, actually, you know what? One more warning. Uh, I kind of mentioned in my last video about the lack of a cable, and uh, there's an important uh, thing to tell you about the cable. It should have came with one. Uh, there are some cables that are just charge cables that are out there. They're cheap little flimsy cables, and their job is to charge cell phones. And they use the exact same uh, micro USB adapter. Unfortunately, some of those don't have data transmission capabilities. And that is the number one reason why you can't get stuff loaded to your Arduino boy is because you're using the one for your cell phone that is just a charger one. Now, the average cell phone does have one that is also a data cable, uh, but there's a lot of cheap stuff out there and it doesn't. So if you are having this problem where you can't connect to your Arduino boy, your computer won't see it, change out your cable, get yourself a decent data cable and that should probably correct the problem. Don't worry, I'll go into that a little bit later as well. All right, so after one month, uh, how do I feel about it? Yeah, I like it as a device. It has some very specific limitations. I think at the end, I'm gonna kind of give an overview uh, while I play the game of them. Hardware-wise, the thing's built like a brick. I mean, I've, man, I have really, I have not been careful with this thing. I mean, it's been dropped, kicked, bolted, mutilated, uh, put in pockets. It looks pretty good. Uh, the bottom of the screen has a little bit of a, I don't know, kind of a gurg. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but kind of a fuzziness to it that I don't particularly like. Uh, but it it's not distracting during gameplay. It just looks a little weird. I don't know if it's just not sealed completely or if it's supposed to look that way, but it does look a little bit weird. That said, this backlight's awesome. Just look at how clear that is. I'm sorry you don't, you're not really getting the full effect of it. But uh, yeah, really great screen. Uh, the buttons are well done. Uh, I notice a little bit of softness on my down button now that I've been using it a lot. But you know, that's life, it's okay. All right, so uh, really enough about the hardware. I don't think there's really that much more to say uh, other than I really wish that this button wasn't so recessed. It could just be a bigger button and, uh, and be a little bit less recessed, something maybe rubbery or something, I don't know. But uh, other than that, yeah, pretty decently built device if you're into this kind of thing. All right, let's go and let's load some software on this and show you how to do that from the top. All right, here we go. This is Ardu Boy's main website, community.arduboy.com. In here is the game list. You will want to check these out because that is where you download your games. You can run other Arduino-based games if you get lucky enough to get them to compile. Just thought you should know. Uh, sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't. Uh, there's a real RAM limitation here on the Ardu Boy that makes it kind of hard to use uh, some of the more standard stuff. But every once in a while you do get lucky and sometimes you can slightly edit them and get them to work. Uh, and sometimes the community will probably even help you out, I would imagine, at least based on what I've seen from them. Uh, also on this website, uh, if we go to the main, ah, wait, there we go, www.arduboy.com. You can scroll down and pretty much everything that's in this guide is right here in the quick start guide. So if you don't want to watch this video, uh, you can get to the quick start guide. All right, so first things first. Let's download the software. Uh, you go to www.arduino.cc. Click on download. It's absolutely a free download, of course. 
And then in this case, I'm downloading the Mac OS version, which I've already done twice, so I'm not gonna do it again. But uh, click on that and it will pop up and download right there. So if you look in your downloads, uh, you will see the Arduino 169 Mac OS. Of course, it might be a different version for you. Depends, you probably won't have a one after it. But anyway, there it is. And you unzip it. And much like my other one, probably should have cleaned this up. I'm not gonna do Arduino too. Let's just move that to the trash. You'll get Arduino.app. See that? Drag it into your applications folder and run it from there. Don't leave it in your download directory. That is just poor play for Mac users. It's just not a good way to do it. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna move that to the trash, but what you should have done is dragged it to apps where you can, of course, run the Arduino software right from here. First time, it might give you a warning about unsigned code. Just go ahead and execute it. Uh, if you have any other problems with that, I think I got a video on uh, getting your Mac to uh, run things that say unsigned code on them. But I don't think you're going to have that much of a problem because they did end up having to sign it to get the drivers to work properly. Uh, which also is something else to point out that that's incorrect in uh, some guides for this. You don't need to uh, do an unsigning through the terminal anymore. It's all okay uh, nowadays. All right, so we're in this. This window doesn't really matter. This is actually a game uh, that I've got just laying around. Uh, but one thing that you will need to do is you are going to have to go in here into sketch, include library, and you can manage libraries. And you will look for the Arduboy library. Now, in my case, you're gonna notice that it's already installed. But in your case, it probably will not be if this is your first time. So what'll happen is you see how, like this says Arduino Cloud, you can just click install on the Arduboy one and it will automatically install it and put it in the right place. That used to be a manual process. Uh, don't worry about that now. Pretty easy. All right, so now you should basically have everything ready, except you wanna make sure that your board is set to Arduino Leonardo, right there. And uh, that should be available just from the get-go. That shouldn't be a problem. So you shouldn't have any problems. Now, if you look at ports, uh, what's missing here is the actual Arduboy. So what you need to do is you need to plug in your Arduboy and you use a standard micro USB adapter for that. Uh, I have got, <laughs> I've got a problem here. Wait, I can do this. There we go. And I'm gonna plug it in. Now, I wanna note something. There are a lot of people having problems with this uh, particular procedure the Arduboy won't show up. Well, the problem is probably, in most cases, your, ca your cable itself. Uh, if it was a phone charger cable, it may or may not work for data communications. And I'm kind of surprised actually in this day and age that there, that's still an issue because I would think most of them would be wiring it for data as well. But in many cases, try another cable will work. See, now it shows up as a USB modem and that's how it should show up. On mine, uh, I tend to need to pick it every time uh, depending on the mood of the software. So just note, just because you set this port once doesn't mean it's always going to uh, be there for you. You might have to plug it in and set it again. Note that my Ardu Boy is currently on. So let's go take a look at the piece of software I downloaded. Wait, actually, did I download it? If not, let's do it again, just to give you the process. Let's go to the community. Do, 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 There we go, game list. And I think what we were gonna do is we we're going to do SpaceNet, because I haven't played it yet. And we're now gonna download. And we'll just download zip. And it shouldn't be very big because Ardu Boy games are really small. Okay, there it is. Um, 
if I wouldn't have clicked here, because I know that you might not have the uh, same browser that I have, I'm not even sure what browser I'm using right now. If you've got a different browser, it'll show up in downloads, it'll show up as a zip file. Uh, what you can do with zips, rars, whatever, is you can right click on it, or you know, two finger click, and uh, just open it in your archive utility. And uh, there's one built into the Mac, so you don't need to worry about it. So I've unzipped this one already though. And notice how it says space knife dash master. You need to take that master off. Why? I don't know why it cares, but it does. So I'm going to turn it back into space knife. There we go. And we are going to load it up. Let's see. It's nice that the camera's not on me right now because I'm like fighting animals left and right. There are too many animals in this house. I'm not a huge animal person either, but my wife is, so, you know, what do you do? All right, so let's go file open. There we go. And we go into my downloads directory. I'm going to find that game. I say I'm going to find it. There it is, Space Knife. And what I'm looking for is the INO file. There it is, INO. Okay, let's open it up. And there it is right here. So what I can do is I can test it first to see if it's gonna work okay, or I can just upload it. So I can verify, or I can upload. So let's just uh, verify it real quick. It may run a couple errors, and if it does, you might want to try it anyway, because it may work anyway. This one uh, actually is really doing pretty good. There's no uh, little red errors, so it's good to go. And then I am going to oh, upload. There we go. And right now what's going on is the lights on my Ardu Boy are flashing. And it is reset and yes, indeed the game's on here and I'll show you that in just a second. And there we go, Space Knife. Perfectly loaded onto the Ardu Boy and completely unplayable through this camera because it's uh, showing it backwards. There we go. No problem. So anyway, yeah, I do have a few uh, favorite games on the Ardu Boy and I think I'm gonna just uh, load one of them up real quick, show you it, and then talk about the other two as well. So hold on just a second. All right, and here we have Virus LQP79. Uh, I'm basically going to wrap it up with this particular game as an example of a good game on the Ardu Boy. Uh, the reason is that I really have a hard time recording off of this screen. Uh, most of my videos now are done uh, direct to the recording software, uh, and it's really difficult to record like this, especially on a really tiny screen. Uh, which isn't a fault of the Ardu Boy, that's how it's designed, but it is a fault of my recording equipment that does just a terrible job. So, let's start on this game uh, and why I like it so much. It is a basic zombie shooter. It does have some things that I like about it. It's a little bit like, uh, oh man, what's the name of that game? Uh, it was on the SNES, uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, just a little bit. It's not like as complicated as that, but it's like a basic version of that. So you basically rescue people uh, while killing zombies. And you also get coins, there's pickups, uh, both, oh man, uh, as far as money and life pickups. So, you know, it's got a little bit of mechanic in there. And you basically rescue everybody and then go on to the next, oh, sh here, let's try that again. 
you basically try and rescue everybody on each level and then go on to the next level. It's nice. It's got a lot of little extras in it. I think this is a really well designed game. So there's the exit right there. And uh, once I capture a couple people, it will be done. Oh, come on, man. All right. Nope, that's a zombie. All right, there's the other person. Let's go get him. Ooh, I got another heart. Cool. And there we go. Oh, shoot. Oh, am I going to make it? Yes, made it. I play a lot better when I'm not talking. And I talk a lot better when I'm not playing. So uh, catch 22 there, really. But anyway, that is uh, basically... The Ardu Boy. Uh, how do I feel about it? Uh, let's zoom out a little bit, see if I can get this uh, camera to adjust. All right, so the Ardu Boy. How do I feel about it in the end? Uh, I think the price is a little bit high. Not terribly high, but just a, a little bit. Uh, system construction is really quite good. It's built really well. I've said that several times, and I continue to stand behind that statement. As far as games go, the game selection, it's still a little bit in its infancy. Uh, that said, there's some great stuff to play. I like uh, I like Glove quite a bit. I like Mazogs quite a bit. Both of those are really good games that play to its strengths. And speaking of its strengths, don't expect this to be a Game Boy level of gameplay. It just doesn't have the RAM there. I don't think you're going to see stuff that's at a Game Boy level. Yeah, graphically, it's better than a Game Boy, but as far as... Uh, the actual RAM, it's just so limited to what it can do. I'd expect more of a ColecoVision or an Intellivision level of game, and that's just fine as long as they play to it. There's all sorts of great little games you can put on this thing. Um, as far as the other limitations go, I, I do wish there was more storage on board so that you could store more than one game. This game, would, this game system would be a lot better if you could store multiple games at a time. That would be a really big boon for it. Yeah, you can do like a selector, but you're still stuck with what you've got as far as memory uh, and storage on the device. So that's a really, really big limit. Other than that, yeah, um, again, a pretty neat little device. Liked messing with it. One of the really great things about it is that you can tweak games to your liking. Uh, I'm sure if you got a wife or a girlfriend, they'd really appreciate it if you like, you know, put their name or something in there just to just to give them something cute. So it, it, it is really cool. If you don't like a mechanic in a game, you can always try changing it. You can always try writing your own games too, which it's pretty easy to do. Uh, at least it's it's pretty easy to take like a game that's currently there and tweak. I have tweaked around with it a little bit. I didn't want to show anything though, because uh, I was just messing around. It's kind of embarrassing when you uh, hack up some of these games. But anyway, yeah, neat little device. I like I like the theory, just would like to see more RAM and storage. But still, if you think this is something you'd like, you like that Atari 2600 ColecoVision level of game, hey, I, by the way, would somebody please make Adventure for this? I would love to see a copy of Adventure. All right, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to be back on to uh, GPD a little bit later in the week. We're going to do a little bit of emulation on it for the uh, Dreamcast. Yes, the Dreamcast. Also, I got a game I've been playing called Overture, which I can't believe I haven't played this earlier. It's a roguelite that's really kind of cool, so check that out. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please thumbs up and subscribe for more. Retro Rocks Gaming Videos